Next, we turn to the concept of surfaces of revolution. Now, the difference between surfaces of revolution and volumes of revolution is this is just the outside of the figure. So imagine we take this curve here and just the curve, not the area bounded by the curve, but just the curve itself. And we rotate that curve 360 degrees around a particular axis of revolution. Well, the figure we would get would be this figure, but you would just have the surface of the figure. You wouldn't have the inside filled in. So if we want to find the area of that surface, okay? So we want to find the area of that surface. So this is surface area, and you should know the difference between surface area and volume at this point. We can do that really based off of looking at uh, a part of a cone and the way you find the surface area for a frustum of a cone. And so if I look at a cone, frustum of a cone, it looks like this. So it's not a full cone in that it doesn't have this point of the cone here. So we just cut that off and look at, again, this is called a frustum of a cone. And we look at finding the area of that frustum. Well, it's based off of revolution. If I took this line here, okay, I'll call that L. If I took that line and I call that L and I knew what that distance was. And L represents the distance of the line from here to here. And I rotate that line around this axis of revolution, it would create this piece of a cone, okay? But if I wanted to find the surface area of this cone here, this frustum of a cone, I would need a couple measurements. Well, one is L. L is a pretty important one. And there's two other measurements. There's a radius down on this end, and there's a radius down on this end. So the radius down here we'll call R1, and the radius down here we'll call R2. And so the formula for finding the surface area, and this is just a geometric formula, uh, the formula for finding the surface area of this cone would be that the surface area is 2 pi r l, where r is what we're going to call the average radius. It's the average of these two radii. So add those two radii together, divide by 2, that's your average radius. That should sound familiar to you from what we just did previously with shell method. And L is the distance from here to here of this line. Well, there's two points on this line. You could find the distance of that line. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that to help us find the surface area of something like this. Well, the only real difference between the two is that this is not a line. This is a curved uh, measurement, right? This is it's not straight. It's got a curve to it. But the concept is very similar by rotating this around this uh, axis of evolution or the straight line around the axis of evolution. So if we think about how we're going to do the surface area of this, well, we would need to know what the length of this curve is, which would be very similar to the length of this line. Well, that's a arc length, okay, which we just covered. R would be considered our average radius, okay, which is basically going to be measured as the if you think about all these different radii in here, the average radius would essentially have to do with the function value uh, that all these heights, if you think about that as your radius, would be based off of. And so that gives us the definition of how we're going to calculate the area of the surface of revolution, so the surface area for revolving a curve. So let's let y equal f of x be uh, continuous and have a continuous derivative on the interval a to b. The area of the surface of revolution formed by revolving that function about, say, the x-axis, and really we could do this about any horizontal or vertical axis, depending on how we set this up, uh, would be based off of doing this formula. Now, how is this formula related to this? Well, this is your arc length formula, which would be the measurement from here to here. So that should be easy to realize. R of X represents that what we call that average radius, which would be there. And we'll 
figure out what exactly that means in a specific example. The 2 pi comes outside the integral, and the a to b just tells you the um, width of x or y values, in this case x values, that this whole thing spans along this interval, right? So you have to know, okay, we're on a curve. Where do we start? What x's do we start at? We're on a curve. What x's do we end at? So we can measure the arc length and the average radius over that distance. So from everything we've covered so far, this is very easy to see where this comes from, especially from this formula for calculating the surface area of this uh, frustum of a cone. So if we want to find the area of the surface formed by revolving x cubed on the interval 0 to 1 about the x-axis, well, that would be the curve from here to here. So this much of the curve rotated around the x-axis, so it would come down here, and we just want the surface area of this uh, figure. And so a pretty simple problem here. Uh, I think we need to just talk about this average radius thing a little bit more, uh, which is different than the average radius we talked about in the shell method, so let's not get that confused. Um, it has to deal with the radius off of the axis of revolution, to the outer edge of the figure, which really, if you think about it, was similar to the heights of rectangles. But anyway, uh, we have a formula for doing this. Okay, This is a function of x, so I'm going to do everything in terms of x. So 2 pi integral from a to b of this r of x okay, times the square root of 1 plus f prime squared dx. So we need f prime f of x is x cubed, f prime is 3x squared. Okay. The a to b is going to be the interval 0 to 1, because that's the x values for which this region spans. So then the only thing we need is this r of x. Well, remember, again, like I said, that represents the radius of the circle from either end, right? You think about that as, you know, if we look at this thing here, I shouldn't draw this one down here. But it's the radius off of the axis of revolution. So the radius throughout this whole thing is going to be based off of this distance off the axis of revolution. So think about it, the height of the rectangles. How would the height of the rectangles be calculated? X cubed. So X cubed is going to be that radius that we're going to be looking at for the circles we would be creating through the revolution. So we can say that the arc length, the sorry, the surface area would be 2 pi integral from 0 to 1 of x cubed times the square root of 1 plus 3x squared squared would give me 9x to the fourth and dx. So now we want to integrate this. We have it set up and we want to integrate. Similar to the problems we have with arc length, they may have an integral we're just not ready to integrate yet. In this case, we do. Um, we'll have a little bit better chance of these, mainly because we have a function outside and inside. We have more to play with here than just the arc length component. And so we can use u substitution, 1 plus 9x to the fourth would be my u. du would be uh, with a 36x cubed dx. Uh, so I don't have the 36, so I'll divide by the 36. I could divide by um, 18 because I could say the 2 is here, but I'm just going to leave the 2 outside. And so what do I get? I have 2 pi. That stays out. I have the integral of the square root of u, so that will read u to the 1 half, and x cubed dx is du over 36. I'll pull the over 36 out. And so ultimately we're just integrating u to the 1 half, which we've done a ton of times and should be very easy to do. This will simplify to pi over 18. So we end up with u to the 1 half integral would be add 1 to that power, divide by, so 2 thirds u, which was 1 plus 9x to the fourth, to the 3 halves between 0 and 1. Remember, I always have to go back to x so that I could evaluate the limits of integration. Because remember, these are x values. I, had, I couldn't leave this as a u. I have to switch it back to x so that I can plug these values in for x. All right. So you may have found yourself making that mistake once or twice. 
So now what do I get here? Well, this 2 and this 2 will cancel, give me a 9, so I get pi over 27. And if I plug 1 in to here, I'll get 10 to the 3 halves um, minus, if I plug 0 in, I'll get 1 to the 3 halves. And so there's my answer for the area. So if there was a unit of measurement here, something really didn't talk about in the previous videos, but you know volume is a cubic measurement, area is a squared measurement, and um, distance, which arc length is a distance, is a linear measurement. So if there was some sort of measurement here, let's just say units, this would be a squared measurement because it's a surface area. Here's another one. Um, this similar to looking at the surface area of a sphere, but it's not the full sphere. Okay, we only have a portion of the sphere, so we need our surface area formula to do this. Uh, what do we have? We have the curve y equals the square root of four minus x squared, which is basically just the top half of the radius two circle here, centered at the origin. Uh, but we're only looking at it between negative one and one, so only from here to here. So only this much of it. And so I'm going to rotate that around the x-axis. So it's going to rotate around this way. And I'm going to have that curve down there. And I want the surface area of this figure. Okay, so if you see, it's not quite the full sphere, right? It's cut off right here. It's just this kind of portion of it, which in some ways looks a lot like that example we had a couple lessons ago where it was that uh, bead or the sphere that we drilled a hole into. So anyway, uh, I want to find this surface area. So I'm going to use my surface area formula, and that's 2 pi integral from a to b of r of x times the square root of 1 plus f prime squared dx. Um, I'm doing everything in terms of x because we have a function of x, so we, that's the easiest way to determine this. Uh, so we have 2 pi. The a to b is the width along the x-axis because we're dealing with x. Well, you see, we're going from here to here, which is an x value of negative 1 to 1, already defined. Uh, we'll skip r for a second. f is this function. So if f is the square root of 4 minus x squared, f prime would be 1 half times 4 minus x squared to the minus 1 half times negative 2x, which we could simplify because this and this will cancel. I'm oh, sorry, this will cancel. So we have negative x over 4 minus x squared to the 1 half. All right, so that's going to go here, but squared. So I'm going to have the square root of 1 plus x squared over 4 minus x squared. Why did I get that? Because if I was to square this, let me give you something to see. If I was to square this, square this, the negative gets squared, x gets squared, and then this gets squared, so it gets rid of the square root. Now, as far as the average radius component here, we're talking about the heights, right? The heights here. This is your average radius of all these circles if you could have made a bunch of circles this way which is based off of the height up to the function. This is the function. So the square root of 4 minus x squared, that is your average radius there uh, in terms of the height of those rectangles. Uh, so then this, with respect to x, is the integral we're going to want to do. All right, let's get rid of some of this. And think about how could we integrate this. Well, let's look at a couple things. We need to definitely simplify this thing a little bit, see if we can even get through this integral. So what are we going to do here? Um, I'm going to find a common denominator inside this square root. So I have the square root of 4 minus x squared here. Then I'm going to get the square root of, common denominator is 4 minus x squared. Okay. So I'm going to have 4 minus x squared plus x squared dx. Now, I think you see what's happening. Once I made that step, I think right away you start to see it come together. I'm going to take the square root of the numerator, separate from the denominator, 
Um, also, you see that these two are going to cancel. But that's going to give me a square root of 4 minus x squared in the denominator, and I have a square root of 4 minus x squared in the numerator. So these are going to cancel. So ultimately, what do I end up with? I end up with 2 pi integral from negative 1 to 1 of the square root of 4 dx. That's all that's left. This cancels. When I take the square root of the numerator and denominator, these two cancel. So I'm just left with the square root of 4, which is 2. So I just have to integrate 2. So I get 2 pi times 2x, negative 1 to 1. So I plug those in. So 2 pi times, I plug 1 in, I get 2. I subtract out when I plug in negative 1, I get negative 2, which would be 4 times 2, which would be 8 pi. So integration-wise, once we simplified, this was real easy. It looked messy. But once we got through some of the simplifying, this was real easy to do. And the surface area was 8 pi. And again, we could say unit squared if you wanted to. Um, if there was a unit of measurement, we would use that. Uh, you don't have to do that right now. But just so you keep that in your back of your mind, surface area, squared measurement.